All right, Drew again. Um, this is done. I want to go over some technical things now. It's pretty much uh, just industry standard. I know a lot of people use Illustrator start to finish because it's easy, it's cleaner. You don't have to mess with any of this blending and Photoshop, and you can pretty much set it up to as set as you go. Um, then you're pretty much limited to, you know, the Illustrator look. You could, you couldn't really get this effect you couldn't get this look with with the illustrator piece of art i suppose uh, i know everyone's seen some of those super photorealistic vector images uh online on the web uh, which are insane i don't even know how they do those but um the amount of time that it would take to put this together as opposed to that i can't even imagine it being close this is uh maybe an hour tops i don't know just straightforward fast you can even sep it I mean, start to finish, something like this, I would set in maybe 20 minutes. It's simple, 25 minutes tops. Um, but that comes with, with a lot of learning. Basically, I just want to show you, saving this as EPS. Once you get it looking like your original, as close as you, as close as you feel comfortable, um, this is pretty much what you get, is what the printer's going to print. I mean, it's really hard to, to deviate from this. I know ink is a lot different than printing. You can even print these out on paper and take a look at them and it'll give you a different play um, but then again once it goes on press if you're able to check it and see how the actual inks laying down or depending what they're using or if you're doing a discharge or who knows what different aspects you know if they're running flashes early or the meshes like a, a really wide open 110 or some obnoxious like that uh, it's gonna be totally different but this way if you get this file to the printer it'll be straightforward ready to go they can use it how they will. Uh, first things first, you always want to get rid of your, your test t-shirt layer, your alpha there, you don't need it. Um, second thing, make sure you have at least some kind of color picked out, even if you're not precise. Just give them an idea so they don't have to guess and you know hope they can figure out what you were thinking. This way it's at least a kind of guideline. You can either let the, the client dictate from this point on or you know put a note on here or something. Uh, once, you're, once you're set, uh, you're going to want to save this and you're going to want to do a, a place into uh, your Illustrator file. So I'm going to save this as a DCS 2.0. I'm sure uh, it's already been saving that way. I'm just going to recover this. I'm just going to call it number 11 so I can find it. You know, save it. Make sure you got the half tone in there. Make sure you got a, you're running a TIFF. It's just easier to see. Single file with a 72 pixels composite. Um, transfer function. You don't always have to include that, but it's not going to hurt you. You're going to want to save it, and then you're going to want to go in Illustrator. Usually, I just send the the Photoshop file. If you save it as a, a DCS, it's a little bigger to email. PSD works just as fine, they can convert it, but it also depends on your printer. They might even require to go and send the Illustrator with the placed DCS. So basically what you want to do if you're going to go right to film, or you're going to output your own films, or you're going to print it yourself, you're going to want to place this. You're going to want to <laughs> go through your mess here. Find your file with all the ones. It's going to read all the plates and it's going to place it right there. Line it up with your uh, registration marks or whatever template you use. Usually, uh, make sure your swatches are all cleared out so there's nothing in here. So when you place it, it'll automatically pop in all your, your PMS colors here. And then basically, what you're going to do is uh, whatever your title name is make sure that everything's consistent and then you'll place your color order here if you're going to throw in flashes that's fine under base whatever um, if you want to go as far as calling out the mesh usually we do that but it also depends on, on what you're comfortable with also uh, CS4 has a great little feature here it's a separations preview really basically just saves you paper um, a lot of times we print out the paper since it's nothing to do with CMYK shut those off so just your spot colors sometimes uh, some systems have a problem showing whites 
but uh, looks like I'm I'm doing all right here. And then uh, you just want to go through and see what's going on. It'll turn off your colors, and you can just double check, make sure nothing's missing. If you have a copyright going on here, or a registered trademark, or even at this point is usually where uh, you want to, if you got a clean cut logo or type to throw on top, or if something's an illustrator that you can just pop right in, it'll knock it out automatically for you. And then from here, you just want to save. You can save it as an AI file, and you're good to go. Basically, from this point, you can print, and this is why it's kind of industry standard. Uh, you can choose your printer and your, your, your rip, whatever you're using. I don't have any rips hooked up to this computer. And I think there's only one, uh, one Canon printer hooked up. So basically, whatever your rips define to your film, it'll be preset by your PPD here. Make sure you're defined, you're fitting to page, or if you're scaling or, or not. Um, from the outputs, you can change from which way your emulsion's going or, or whatever you're going to do. If you're going to do separations, that's in your mode. So that means you're separating right from, from Illustrator here. And then you can actually go in here and uh, determine what you're, what you're printing. I wasn't printing this 144 because that was just the color on here. i got to change it. But otherwise can mess with everything you know if you're doing your angle dots we usually do either a dot or an ellipse you know your frequencies I guess you need to know a little bit about printing to to know what you're gonna do um, usually might recommend 5530 the ellipse but I guess it depends what you're printing then you hit print and you're you're ready to go so if you keep everything the same you know printers are generally uh, ready to go with a file like this and it's pretty straightforward. I don't know, hopefully that helped. Uh, not the funnest stuff, but a lot of people uh, have questions about that, and it doesn't really get shared too much, so hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, uh, shoot them over. Later.